tutorial starts with a song, <laughs> but it's only a few seconds long. <laughs> Let's get started with animation. Hello friends, we start with a new scene and I show you something very playful. And by the way, uh, NURPS, we start with a NURPS curve. There are, there's a 12 part NURPS tutorial course on Udemy and Skillshare, which you might actually enjoy. It deals only with NURPS modeling, industrial design, etc., car fenders, etc. Uh, but today we'll start with a NURPS curve, then we continue with polygons, then we go to mesh, and then we go back to polygons. So um, let us uh, introduce the four view here, because we're going to work in three views to create that curve. Uh, so we start here, we go there, then we go there, and then we go up here. And this is the top view. We move it over here and slightly down like this. Now in the perspective view, uh, view you see that the curve is quite interesting. It's a very elegant way to design something well for industrial design really. Now we go to create and we create a sweep mesh. It's a command which has been released with Maya 2022. So we create a sweep mesh. And um, when we create, uh, press the key three, we get a better display. So it looks more round. And now we create a new material, an Arnold standard surface shader. And I, well, I turn this blue. We don't need the curve anymore. It's done its purpose. We could modify it actually, so uh, this shape would change as well, but uh, we let it stay there. Now we scale it down because we want to have something smaller at the, at the start. And we create a, a mesh from it. What is mesh? Well, it's found under FX because it's a special effects module and it's called M-A-S-H. It was programmed in England and uh, it's a very powerful tool to create many things out of very few like many pieces of geometry out of this single extrude of a curve. Now we can use the option box if we want and we create an instance of it and here you can choose among several um, options and I choose the round one. And you see we have 10 of them. It's uh, the waiter tell, tells us it's 10 objects here. You can count them if you like. When you go to the mesh distribute node, you can increase this number to a really pa pathetic value if you like. Uh, you can use 1000 if you like. This uh, works totally fine. And then you get this quite interesting object. By the way, you can animate this. There's no problem at all. And you can extend this. this the slider is all already at the end uh, with the value 100. If you type in 1000, no problem for mesh. Mesh handles enormous amounts of, uh, well, instances as they called. But of course, this doesn't make sense. So we reduce this again because we want to see that structure. And let us stay somewhere here. We could play around with mesh with these things quite a lot, but we won't do it. We just select the mesh instancer, not the mesh, the instancer, which is basically this node, which has the collection of all these single polygon objects here. And we go to mesh and the utilities, because we use mesh in order to create something different now. And we bake the instancer to objects. Let's briefly meditate about this menu. We bake, that means in computer animation, we bake keyframes to whatever, uh, uh, motion to keyframes, for example. But here we bake an instancer, this is what we see currently, to real objects. Because currently you cannot select these single objects anymore because they are part of this mesh network. So let's go back to the mesh instancer and go to mesh and utilities and we bake the instancer to object. We get this bake instancer tool and we just bake this frame. We don't have an animation. We just bake this frame. Now we delete the instancer and the mesh. 
and we can actually delete the initial sweep. So all we have is this group and when we open it we see all the little parts. Let's close it and select that group and we'll mirror it. How do we do this? Uh, several ways but the most uh, straightforward is duplicate special because we're not ju just duplicating it uh, we're duplicating it in a special way so we selected that group and we use the option box we reset the settings and when you have a look at the little arrows here you see that we want to mirror it in the blue direction which is the z direction in that direction so x y and z so instead of z one we type in minus one and we apply it and then we reset the settings for the next uh, time we use this command so um, it's nice and fresh and now we have two groups and we can move the second one over here Let's introduce a light. We continue with this experiment a little bit further, but uh, let's just briefly introduce a light. A sky dome light is always good for a test, and we render this in Arnold. Very nice. Now uh, we select this object and give it a different color. This time we change it to this kind of well red. Let's render it again and get a little bit closer. This looks good. Now we'll delete the sky dome light because it just irritates us and uh, we'll animate the this object here. Um, we make it rotate in this direction. We animate the Z rotation by typing in an expression equals frame. Now when we run the animation here and let's extend the timeline to say 500 we see this rotation of the left the blue ring. Nice. Now we select the second group. We select the groups not the objects in the groups not these things here but the whole group. So this one now and we again animate the rotate Z channel this time with equals 1.2 times frame. So it goes a little bit faster than the other one. And when we deselect everything and look at the animation this is what it does. The difference is very subtle but you can see it. And of course we can change it if it's too subtle. Right mouse click, edit the expression and don't get intimidated by this window. We just need to change this and instead of 1.2 we type in 2 times frame to click on edit and close that window. Finally, we put these two into a group. They are already groups, but we can group them again by pressing Ctrl G. That creates a new group. Items grouped successfully. This is this group. When we go inside that group, we see the two groups we just had. Now we animate this group and we animate it with keyframes for a change. For example, at the very beginning, let us type in shift E that means we only apply the rotation parameters here. Uh, shift W would uh, just uh, set keyframes for the translate but we won't translate it we just want to uh, animate it in uh, the three dimensions. We go to the very end frame 500 and press shift E again so we have keyframes for the rotation and um, in the well the first part we'll just rotate it a bit like this, like this and like this and the keyframes are set because I have auto keyframe on otherwise I would have to press shift 
E again. And now I go to this part here. It wants to go back to the final keyframe, but I won't let it. And I introduce this keyframe. And now we are ready to go. So we have a motion which is interesting inside of these two groups, the two rings, plus the whole ring rotates. Finally, rendering. Now we can scale this group, make it much smaller and move it up. In order to see things nicely, we need a plane or something on the ground for catching the shadow. And in the NURBS, make NURBS plane section, we can change the width. So we have a big plane now. And now we introduce an Arnold area light, which sits in the center of the scene. And we make it much bigger and let it shine more or less down. And now when we render it, it's too dark. because we need to change that, the light performance here. First of all, we untick normalize. Now we can see the structure much better. And then we can just increase the exposure. Now we go to rendering, which is this, the render options, the display render settings, it's called this part. We give the file a name rotating wheels. We select an image format, in my case for test purposes and demonstration purposes, it's PNG in most cases. Then this is important, frame and animation extension, we want to have a name, a number and an extension, that means it's going to be called rotating wheels dot zero 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 one dot PNG, which is fine and we animate from 1 to 500. This is the camera we're gonna uh, render, the perspective camera, which is just fine, and we go to the render settings and to increase them to HD 1080. That's basically it. Now we can go to Arnold Renderer and increase the camera A, A which is anti-aliasing, to say 6, which takes much longer to render. And we can go to system if we have a graphics card which supports GPU rendering. And I try this and I start the rendering process by clicking rendering and render and render the sequence. Not the front camera, the perspective camera and I just start. And when it's finished I show you the final animation and that's all I wanted to tell you. Be playful try to try out several tools in Maya because if you have a certain job to do and with a deadline you probably think back oh didn't I do this complex wheel or structure using mesh and bringing the mesh world back to the polygon world have a nice day bye bye